Okay, let's talk about preparing for your temporary orders hearing. You will start out by going into your temporary orders hearing template and pull that into your case. And then you can edit it to make it specific to your case. And some of these are gonna apply no matter what. So let's go through each level. So you have plan level actions and everything in here becomes an action essentially. But you have plan level actions that don't necessarily apply to a specific category. So they're at the top. And the first one is, do you need to order a court reporter? Now that might sound strange if you don't practice in Dallas County. But in Dallas County, we have associate judges and they do not have court reporters assigned to them. So if you want to have a transcript of your hearing, you need to order a court reporter. Now, how do you decide that? Well, part of it may be budget because you're going to have to pay the court reporter. Part of it may be looking forward. Do you anticipate you may get some good information at the temporary hearing that you may want to show to the district judge later? Because in Dallas, it's going to be a different judge that hears your final trial. My general rule is to err on the side of ordering the court reporter if my client can possibly afford it. Because you may get some great testimony because it's early in the case, the lawyer has not had a lot of time to prepare their client yet, they haven't figured out maybe all the legal angles and therefore altered their story a little bit. So you might capture some good testimony and if you don't have a court reporter there, the judge isn't going to remember it because it's going to be a different judge at final. And you're going to have no record of it. All you're going to have is your own memory of it and perhaps you could try to cross them in the future and say, didn't you say something different at the temporary hearing? Well, if they lie and say no, or they misremember, uh, what are you going to do? You know, no, no one will be there to vouch for the truth. So I like having that transcript and I would recommend it if you can afford it. And the temporary hearing hopefully will not be terribly lengthy, so you could call the court reporter and find out, you know, if it's an hour, two hours, half a day, how much do they anticipate that would cost in making your decision. I think it's a worthy investment if you possibly can. And this is a case, I'm assuming when I make that recommendation, that you know you're having a contested hearing and you have a special set. So what does that mean? <laughs> well, in Dallas, when you set your temporary hearing, let's say that I've been hired by Mary Smith and Mary and I have filed our motion for temporary orders and we've set it with associate judge. And now we're serving Joe Smith, her husband. Well, I don't know if there's a lawyer yet. I don't know if he's gonna show up. So at that point, I may not order the court reporter yet. But let's say that Joe hires um, Sally Sue lawyer. Well, Sally Sue calls me and says, hey, we don't agree to anything. We're going to need a contested hearing. We better get a special set. If you're going to need more than 45 minutes, or if you know you have a fully contested hearing, the associate judges prefer that you call and get a special set, which means that time will be specially set aside for you, and you will have that time available instead of being on a general docket. So obviously that's very preferred because then you know you're going to go that day. Once you have that special set, I recommend having the court reporter.